Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Neat Work, the podcast for all things neat. I am your host, Theo. And I am Dexter. Great. Now, we both have been looking forward to this episode for a while, but first let's uh, talk about the neat current events. The Neat Work has just passed 50 YouTube subscribers, and I think that's pretty cool. It's actually, it means a lot that you guys are doing that. It kind of shows that, you know, hey, this is, you know, maybe this can go somewhere. Yeah, I think like a lot of uh, podcasts and YouTube channels, when they first get started, they they never think they're going to even make it to 50. But uh, it is cool seeing, seeing that uh, kind of milestone. So thank you. Yeah, thank all of you so much for uh, subscribing. And here's to... Uh, a hundred and then a thousand and then a million. Here's to many more podcasts. Absolutely. And in, I don't know, more uh, worldly type neat news, there is a really big crypto crash going on for a lot of reasons. Um, the big one is that if you remember our, our first Neat Bucks episode, well, I mentioned that all it would take for crypto to become worthless is for governments to start cracking down on it. And that's pretty much exactly what's happening. China has begun a crap crackdown on Bitcoin and basically any other crypto you can think of. And that's causing a pretty big sell off. On another note, China cracking down on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency has made the used GPU markets a lot cheaper. Has it? Yeah, funny enough. Used GPUs, primarily they're used for crypto mining. Right. Uh, in the crypto market, of course. And so they were getting eaten up like crazy. That's what kind of caused the GPU cost explosion. Right. I had a stock in, uh, what was it? Uh, QQQ? No, it was uh, Logitech was one of them. I don't think Logitech makes GPUs, but that's one of them. And then I think the uh, NVIDIA. I had a stock in NVIDIA, and that one blew up pretty big. And then I sold it. NVIDIA pretty much exploded when the crypto craze hit. And that that's the reasoning, is that people were using GPUs, buying them in mass. Like, I think the 1650s were, like, one of the most popular GPUs for a while. Right. Because they were fairly cheap. And they did enough to mine crypto. Right. Which, so, yeah, that's kind of a unforeseen side effect of all this. But if you'd like to continue with the crypto crash. I don't know how much influence this this has on the crypto market, but apparently a couple of like big tech influencer types like Elon Musk have uh, essentially started talking trash about crypto and causing the people who, who uh, kind of worship them to sell off and as far as what this will mean for the future of crypto well uh, one more thing about crypto is that i believe uh there's a south american country it's like it could be bolivia it's like bolivia or colombia or something like that hold on let me look it up really yeah bitcoin official currency uh el salvador El Salvador has made uh, Bitcoin its official currency. Yeah, El Salvador has is has given up whatever its currency is and made Bitcoin its official currency. So, yes, we have a big superpower cracking down on crypto, but we have these smaller countries embracing it. And that's actually quite interesting. I wonder what the cause for that is. I wonder if they were dissatisfied with the previous currency because it was put in place by a different government or something it's it's entirely possible as far as i can tell the dip is still going on and for some this is an opportunity to buy in uh whether or not the crypto market will recover as a result of china's crackdown remains to be seen though but i might i might buy the dip i might buy the dip at some point well, that's the thing about crypto, right? It always crashes really hard when everyone panics, and then it just explodes a year later. Right. A lot like the, the stock market. Um, at, at the beginning of COVID, my, my portfolio went from like 7,500 to 500 
and then I just I just did nothing for the whole year, and it recovered exactly as it was. Diamond hands. Diamond hands. <laughs> now on to the subject of the episode. This is one that both of us have been looking forward to since we basically started. And because it's such a, let's see, how would I describe it? Maybe a kind of personalized episode. It, it's kind of about like what we want. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm trying to say. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And much like that, the neat nest is in the eye of the neat. <laughs> the neat nest. Oh, let's see. Home is where the neat is. <laughs> <laughs> the nest is where the neat is. Yes, exactly. If you haven't guessed by now, we're be, we'll be talking about your domicile, your living space as a neat. And if you are an indoor style neat, you're definitely very invested in your own living space. Today, we'll be talking about how to make the most out of the place you likely spend the most of your time, your very own neat nest. Um, this time, we're talking about just the one room as kind of that neat stereotype goes, but as this series continues, we'll expand more on this subject and explore other neat living situations. Do you have your own neat nest, Theo? Any plans for it? Um, Currently, I guess you could call what I have right now the neat nest, but it's not really my ideal. Um, I'm currently planning with a friend of mine, another friend of mine, to uh, move him up here and then we're going to get a place together, and then I'm going to put together my ideal neat nest. What about you? Uh, Same here. It's by no means, I mean, you know, I'm living with my folks, so it's by no means my own living space. Right. I just totally rearrange it to the way I want it. And it's it's a little, yeah, it's a little lacking on the department of what I need, but for now, it'll do. Sure. When I get my own place, I definitely am going to have some plans for it. Yeah, I've got, I guess we'll be talking about those plans during this episode. Yeah, probably later on. I think a typical neat nest is probably going to be a bedroom of some sort. So there's a good chance that you have a bed somewhere in your home. Uh, my problem with beds, though, is that they take up so much space in the room. And while a lot of people lay on their bed and use their laptop or Game Boy or whatever. I personally only use the bed for sleeping. I actually, I use mine for a lot of like reading and I admittedly take several naps. Yeah, I take a, I take a few naps <laughs> every once in a while. Many, many naps. So <laughs> beds are kind of a keystone to my room. I guess I could play Game Boy in a bed, but it's it's mostly like that kind of seated position. I don't really like it. But really, I, I have this thing that takes up almost a third of the space in my room, and I only use it for... I mean, I guess I sleep a lot, but I only use it when I'm sleeping, so it it's still taking up all this room. But luckily, there are some things to resolve this particular issue. I once tried a Japanese folding futon mattress, I don't know if it was like not a real futon or what, but it was a lot less comfortable than the futons I slept on in Japan. I know my brother had one of those for a while and it was really thin. Exactly. Yeah, mine was really thin too. It didn't seem cushiony at all. Right. And it, it really like, I'm fairly certain it ruined his back. Yeah, I had that issue as well. Um, I would wake up and my, my neck would be really sore. Your neck, your back? My neck, my back, my... <laughs> <laughs> but when I studied abroad in Japan, I stayed at a couple of Ryokan, and those futons were some of the best sleep I'd ever gotten. So I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, or if I bought the wrong thing, or what. I think you just gotta be really careful and can't really skimp on it. Right. I think, though, in the future, what I want to try is the, uh, something like a loft bed, kind of like a bunk bed that's missing its bottom bunk so you can set up something like a computer desk down there. Right. I've seen them before. I really yeah. I think they're really cool, actually. Yeah. Um, but you can put like a closet down there or whatever you want. I'm probably going to do the computer desk thing. I've also personally seen people take granted 
this was in the dorms I was at, I've seen people take a more simplistic approach and just set up like a, a hammock even. A hammock? Yeah, I've seen people set up hammocks. Uh, they basically, all they have to do is have like a pretty easy to kind of shuffle around steel frame set up with a wide base on it and they can set that up in their rooms or they can even hang it from the walls. Interesting. So I know there's like um, camping style hammocks where it folds into like a little bitty pod. I wonder if, if it's the same concept. Yeah. Well, like, would that be comfortable to consistently sleep in if you could uh, maybe set up a couple of hooks on a couple of walls? And then when you're not using the hammock, you just remove, you, you, you like take one end off of the hook and hang it on the other hook. I personally could say that they're pretty darn cozy. They basically like wrapped them and lined them with like comforters. Nice. So they're pretty warm. And it, yeah, it was pretty comfy overall. Really cozy. Out here where it's nice and cool all the time, they'd leave their windows open. So like they'd kind of have this brisk air kind of hitting them, but they're mostly surrounded by a really thick comforter. Okay. So that's it can be cozy. All right. Yeah, I I had not ever considered a hammock before. I'll have to let's see when I when I get my own place, I'll have to consider that cuz like a hammock, let's see, the kind of hammock I'm thinking is like 50 bucks and the big loft bed frame is like 300 bucks and I guess I'll just consider which one I really want more. And you also have to consider how you're going to hang it. Yeah, how I'm going to hang it. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Uh, but what other furniture would you put in your neat nest, Dexter? So for me in my lifestyle, things like my computer are super important. So I'd have to have a desk of some kind. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd absolutely need a desk. And I'd need a decent bit of free, clear workspace that's not being eaten up by, you know, my monitors, my keyboard, my mouse. I would need a good space to t like keep a notebook or things like that mm. uh, just to make space for my physical projects that I do. My ideal nest would probably have, or goblin cave, if you will. I've, <laughs> I've kind of resulted to calling mine a, a goblin cave instead of a, a neat goblin nest. Cave. <laughs> um, my ideal cave would uh, have a lot of like clean open surfaces uh, to work on various hobbies. I'd probably I'd probably, like, now that you mention it, I'd probably have a loft bed set up with, like, a pretty large desk that kind of wraps around underneath it. Okay. So I could do various things. Maybe also have the loft bed to, like, open up the middle of my room a little bit more. Right. And that's that's why I want uh some kind of retractable or out-of-the-way bed situation, because that opens up a lot of room in your uh, in your room. You can make it more cozy. Exactly. But I don't really need a lot of things. I don't really watch TV. I don't play games on, you know, traditional consoles typically. Right. Uh, and if I do, I just hook it up to my computer monitor. So. But that is that is a good point. If you are a console gamer, like some kind of entertainment center would be probably a good piece of furniture for you. Yeah, I like would need a super comfy chair, probably. Yeah, a real comfy gamer chair. Yeah, I'd need a real comfy rolly chair. And, uh, like, I actually use my bed a lot. I do a lot of stuff on my bed. I actually find it pretty comfortable. You do a lot of stuff on your bed, eh? Oh, yeah. Everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, everything except the things I'm doing at my computer. Uh, <laughs> so I would, I would also need to have a pretty comfy bed situation. I've like along with uh, the idea of some kind of folding bed, I've been considering the use of inflatable furniture. I've never used it before, but these things like chairs and couches that can be deflated and, and put away pretty easily. And if I feel like I want to rearrange my room a little bit, I mean, the inflatable furniture makes it super easy. Would that get annoying to uh, kind of take care of all the time, though, like deflating and reinflating every night when you want to go to bed? I mean, you don't have to deflate it every single night. The only the only thing that uh, I'm I would be like worried about is getting one that pops, maybe. Yeah, that could be a worry. Another one is, do they maintain heat well? I'm not sure. 
you know, with all that air underneath you, I think they'd be kind of chilly. I hadn't considered that, but uh, I'm also not sure it's that important. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, one of the things that keeps me up is how hot it is. So maybe having a little bit cooler of a surface would be better. The more I think about it, a lot of the material that they make those kinds of beds out of doesn't really breathe a lot. So it actually can get pretty warm. Uh, the air beds, you mean? Yeah. Right. So I guess if we're going to start talking about the temperature, we could talk about like, I guess the other things that make a neat nest comfortable. I guess we let's just start with temperature. I think most people think of like a cozy room as like a room that's pretty warm and or making your room warm and cozy is as easy as one of those plug in radiators or like a little heating fan. I'm not the surest how to cool a room, though, if you like things nice and cool. Um, I think they just make little miniature air conditioners. I usually have my ceiling fan running like all day long just to kind of keep the air moving in my room. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Having a fan. That typically keeps it a little bit cooler. I also uh, have a, sh I live on the shadier side of my house. Mm. So maybe an important thing to keep in mind is picking the ample location to set up. That is a very good point. If you want it cooler. Right. My room is on the side of the house that gets really hot toward the end of the day. Right. Mine is kind of set up to where it never really gets, you know, the brunt of it. I guess it gets it in the morning. That's probably when I get the most sun. Right. But that afternoon heat on, on a really bad day can you, you're like cooking, man. It's not OK. <laughs> so I actually live on the cooler side of the house. Which uh, suits my needs because I prefer it to stay cooler. If I want to warm up, I'll just put a coat on. Maybe doing a quick survey of what how the day affects each of your rooms is important before determining where to set up your neat nest. Right. I will leave this advice. Uh, it's always easier to warm up than to cool down. Being from Texas originally, it's always easier to warm up than cool down. Because <laughs> you can only take so many clothes off. That's true. But once they're off, it's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> once they're off, it is a good time. I can confirm. <laughs> you can always put something more on you can always get under like a nice big cozy blanket yeah uh, a snuggie remember those i do i actually pretty much on my weekends i never leave my robe so <laughs> nice that's just how it goes and once you've uh once you've picked the room that is the most comfortable in terms of temperature a lot of people consider how a room looks to be part of the comfort factor and uh, obviously you can decorate your room however you like, but a lot of people might not immediately consider the lighting of a room. When we talk about room decoration, a good example of this would be uh, Chris Chan. We talked about him recently. You can take a look at his room, and it's a prime example. It really reflects who he is as a person, what he values, right? A hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say that, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> he's a... Uh... Definitely what he values. You mentioned like the big workbench area. Yeah, he's he's got one of those. He's got the big workbench where he works with his Legos. Where he keeps track of his town. Yeah, where he uh, he builds his little, it's almost like a Sim City kind of thing. He's actually got like just a really big kind of model project going. Uh-huh. Uh, but, but back to lighting. Um, the right lighting can change a room drastically and make it more or less comfy. What I understand is we humans tend to prefer soft and warm lighting over harsh lighting. And that's something about the primitive parts of our brain preferring light that appears to be more natural. Grug like fire. Yes. Grug want sunset. <laughs> Grug <laughs> want sunrise. Grug not like blue light. Grug like warm fire. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that also kind of leads us to consider the colors of your light as well. And I can't remember where I read this, but blue light is said to be more calming than, say, red lighting. But th then again, I've also heard that the light that comes out of your computer monitor is blue, but it also keeps you awake. So I'm not quite sure what the difference is. I think you might be orienting that more towards the color itself. Um, whereas, you know, red and yellow is supposed to make you hungry. Pink is supposed to have a calming effect. Blue is supposed to, like, 
uh, force you to th- like it's to stimulate, you know, mental instances, things like that. Interesting. Okay, yeah, the mental stimulation aspect makes a lot of sense. So that's why places like McDonald's have red and yellow. Supposedly stimulates the kind of lizard brain, makes you hungry. Huh. Uh, maybe it makes you think of like fruit. If I was to take a guess, um, a good example of pink being used to calm people is uh, there's a prison down in Arizona that's literally everything is painted pink. And it's one of the most like docile prisons. That's like, interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, something about the color just kind of takes the fight out of the prisoners. Um, something else that's interesting is I think it's called Go Away Green. Go Away Green. All right. What's it do? Um, Disney World uses Go Away Green to hide all of their non fantastical doors and like light poles and things. Interesting. So when people, patrons are just going around and you ask them like, hey, have you seen any doors or trash cans or anything? And they'll be like, what are you talking about? It's because go away green is at that just kind of dull green that we just find is uninteresting. And so, uh, so they're painting it in such a way that people don't notice it. Yeah, they paint it so that, uh, yeah, it, it's not as obvious. Huh. Uh, it, it just doesn't stick out to our minds as something of importance, so we don't take note of it. Interesting. Uh, and how would you use that in a neat nest? You could maybe use go away green on, you know, the necessities that don't necessarily uh, appeal to you that much. You know, uh, I I wouldn't necessarily say like wires and things should be go away green. Interesting. And personally, I don't even know if go away green is a good idea for the neat nest in itself. Okay. But that's just an interesting, like, color fact. Yeah, yeah it's okay. just an interesting color fact. Kind of going on a bit of a tangent there. Oh, no worries. That that actually is really interesting. I'll have to look look that up. There's also That's also why uh, Walmart is painted blue. It makes you want to sit there and think and buy more, plan more. Uh, yes, I have read that, that uh, blue kind of creates contemplative feelings, uh, like planning for the future type stuff. And that's why Target is red, because red kind of promotes uh, instinctual purchases, something like that. A little more energetic. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it, color theory is fascinating. It's an incredible subject. Right. Uh, and apart from just the light that j- tends to be put in a room, what else could you do to light your room? I've seen a lot of people do, like, under desk lights and things like that under desk okay so it's like a tape of maybe leds or something yeah like a light tape led light tape. i've considered something like that but around the upper edge of my room i've definitely given that some thought too i think that could be fun maybe if i hook it up to like my computer and just have it kind of sub processing the whole time yeah i've seen um i think there's rgb tape light so something like that. But I just want like purple or pink for mine. Interesting. I was thinking RGB. Okay. I guess I guess if it's R- RGB, you can make it whatever color you want it to be. And then uh, trigger whatever feelings you want. If you're studying, you can turn it to blue. If you just want to calm down, turn it to pink. And if you're on a budget, you could do the same thing, but maybe with like icicle lights. I've seen people do stuff with icicle lights. I've seen Halloween lights, uh, Christmas lights. I guess, like, depending on the kind of lights you use, it would create a certain mood for the room. And it's generally, like, just a nice dim light. Let's say you're just using warm Christmas lights, warm white Christmas lights. It creates a nice dim light, and it looks, it it honestly looks pretty neat. Yeah, it it can add a lot of life to a room. Mm Mm-hmm. A lot of personality. I think icicle lights have personality to them more so than, say, a ceiling light does. I think it, yeah, it can, uh, I think it can make or break, break a room, kind of going back to Chris Chan, you know, how he has all of that stuff on his walls and it's actually kind of off putting. Right. I've never considered the lighting in Chris Chan's room. Control is key. Yeah, control. Um, not going guess, overboard, but I guess whatever makes you more comfy, right? Doesn't right. Matter. Um, I guess in in to kind of tag along with that control aspect, a uh, dimmer switch. Right. You don't want to be blasted by light, right? 
Right. Um, I my current light is just a flip switch, but yeah, the ability to dim the lights in your room is probably pretty essential to making a more comfier kind of situation. Any kind of bright lights are going to be a little bit too much. Right. You know, in a place that you want to be comfortable. It doesn't exactly. matter how clear it's going to be. It could be bright pink and that's just going to be a little too energizing. Uh-huh. Sometimes if you want to, you know, maybe just calm down, relax a little bit, you need to dim it down. You don't need something that you're going to close your eyelids and still see it. Another thing about uh, kind of getting back to like the lights. Okay. Is, uh, you know, bright, energetic lights can be really noisy. Which kind of takes me to my next. Um, not noisy as in they make a lot of sound, but noisy as in uh, there's just a lot going on, a lot to process. Right. It's It's chaotic looking. Like kind of getting into noise, uh, you may also want to consider how your room sounds. My room right now has an issue with uh, like traffic outside. Uh, there's, sometimes there's a lot of uh, cars going on by. There's a guy who likes to ride his dirt bike up and down the road all day. Oh, man. Yeah, I have that trouble, too. I have these, in, uh, I think they're log trucks that go up and down this road because this town is a big logging town. But yeah, every time one of those semis or log trucks passes in front of my house, I absolutely know it. And not even outside externally, but inside my house, outside my cave, uh, there's a fair bit of traffic as well, just within the house. Yeah. Uh, just other people living in the house. Yeah. And it, it creates a lot of noise. So another thing to kind of keep in mind is uh, it's important to think about, where to go to kind of cut down that kind of hustle and bustle. Mm -hmm. Another kind of important thing to think about when picking where you want to put your nest. Right. So how would you, I, I guess they, they make like sound dampening foam. I'm not sure that would work uh, to cut down on outside noise. How would you cut down on outside noise? Cancellation noise is a good option. So kind of playing something within your uh, own domain to kind of cancel out things that are coming from outside. A lot of headphones do that now. They kind of release like a bit of a white noise. And that's how you're able to kind of create sound cancellation headphones. Right. And I think I've been kind of unintentionally doing that. Almost all of the time I'm playing kind of that lo-fi hip hop stream. And I know those have kind of a, I guess the effect is supposed to simulate a vinyl record, but it is a kind of very light white noise that cancels out some noise from the outside. That poor girl will never finish her homework. <laughs> I've actually not been listening to that one. I've been listening to one called a uh, coffee shop lo-fi. That poor guy will never finish his coffee. <laughs> and uh, even if it doesn't drown out the noise of, say, the big semi trucks passing in front of my house, it does kind of distract me from those noises because I'm listening to the music and not hearing every little thing that goes on out front everything a little bit less obvious uh we used to have a pretty consistent sound of a lighthouse outside a lighthouse yeah it just kind of did the it did the little horn every couple minutes huh and after a while we uh i've learned to kind of tune it out but cars are a little bit different because they're unexpected right uh but Getting back to noise dampeners, the foam that you're talking about, I think the way that works is it has like a wavy surface on it, like an egg carton. And the objective is to spread out the surface area that these sound waves are kind of hitting, uh -huh. creating different angles for them to bounce off of, which the idea is to kind of make them bounce in different directions and, you know, die out before they hit you. Yes. And I was what I'm wondering is that's supposed to keep noise inside a room. It's also supposed to cut down on echoes. I think, and I'm no sound scientist here, I think it would help a little bit. It's like another layer of insulation. Probably would. Um, if it works the way I think it would, you would think that flipping them around on your wall would actually do it even a little better, right? Because that sound's coming through your walls. That makes a lot of sense. If it actually works that way, I'm no scientist. Uh, write a comment if if you're a sound scientist. And... Yeah, neither of us are, are audio engineers, but 
I mean, yeah, if if uh, you're trying to keep noise out, I, that would make sense to me, as opposed to like putting sound dampening foam on every inch of the exterior of your your house. <laughs> that would not be ideal nor cost efficient. No, it would not, and it would it would look weird. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you would be the weird guy of your your uh, neighborhood, not because you don't ever come outside, but because you're the weird guy with the egg cartons outside his house. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we talked a little bit about decorating a room. Um, I guess, like, something that could be kind of fun or put your own personal touch on your neat nest is, is uh, I guess, like, themed decorations. What do you think of that, Dexter? And maybe if you don't know, I can just explain it to you. You want to explain a little bit more? Okay. So my current neat nest, I... Uh, I kind of have like a weird pirate theme going on. I have a I have a map of the world with all the places that I've been pinned on it. And in addition to these blackout curtains I have, I've been hanging pirate flags over my windows as additional curtains. Interesting. But I'm also thinking once I get my own place with this other guy, uh, a cyberpunk theme to the room. That could be fun. And I'm not sure how I would... I can see where the LED lights come in. Yeah, the LED lights. Uh, I'm not. That's about the only thing I can think of. I'm not sure how else I might achieve that cyberpunk look, but I think that would be make for a really cool neat nest. I know yeah, neats yeah. are really into technology, so cyberpunk just seems kind of appropriate. More utilitarian designed furniture. Yeah, yeah, minimalist designed, not too, um, not too extravagant looking. Very sleek. That could be interesting. Yeah. I myself. Uh, and more of like a functionality over form. So kind of having a theme, maybe not so much of an important thing to me. I don't hang anything on my walls, so I'd probably actually do something with sound dampeners before anything else. Yeah, that's kind of where I sit with that. My my nest, what makes my nest comfy is what I can do in it. Not necessarily how it looks. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what are some things you would want in your own neat nest, Dexter? If I was to like think of what I need, I would say something like I like uh, I like dark spaces. So probably blackout curtains would be really important to have. Of course, you know, a mini fridge is a must. Uh, you got to keep your neat drinks in there. Yeah. Um, and other neat essentials. That's where I keep my my nuggies. Um, my tendies, if you will. Yes. Absolutely. Keep your nuggies close at hand. And I can also have it in there to reduce the amount of travel outside of my nest to a minimum. I also personally, I found out that I uh, found this out in college, but just keeping a an electric kettle nearby uh, mm. is like something that I just I love having one. It I can boil some water for tea. I can boil water if I'm eating ramen. I can do just any of that real quick, easy. Plug it in and go. Yeah, it's one of my essentials, I think, just to have an electric kettle. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll piggyback on the, the electric kettle thing. Um, along with the electric kettle thing, uh, I don't quite have a that, but I have a Keurig machine that does about the same thing because uh, I like my coffee. And uh, having a, a regular coffee machine with a pot makes a little too much coffee. But with a Keurig, you just you just make one cup and... That's all you really need. You don't waste a lot of coffee and water to make an entire pot of coffee that you're not going to drink. Or maybe that you do drink and you end up getting sick later because you drank all that coffee. Right. Like you said, you can. I could probably use that Keurig machine to make a bunch of hot water to, say, cook up some ramen with. And I definitely use it to make tea. Definitely. I actually I did ceramics for a little while. And I made my own teapot. I actually steep my own tea, and that's how I set things up. So having the electric kettle and pouring the hot water into my my teapot, I steep my tea that way. Makes for, you know, actually kind of an enjoyable time. Right. I also actually find something like keeping a small pet really peaceful. Uh, I have a tarantula. It's kind of a weird small pet, but... No, it's cool. Gives me something to look at sometimes. I mean, a lot of times it's like a pet jar of dirt, and then sometimes it's like an actual. Uh, when the tarantula feels like coming out. Yeah, when it feels like coming out, it's actually like a cool pet. 
I watch it mostly at night when it comes out. Right. It's fairly easy to keep. I mean, I mean they eat seldomly sometimes. Some of them, some breeds only eat, like, they can almost go a year without eating. I wouldn't recommend it for all of them, but some of them go into, like, a a period of fasting. Interesting. The one I have eats a little bit more frequently. It's a little more uh, active, much quicker growing. So, you know, I get to see it a little bit more. And most importantly, it, uh, it hardly makes any noise, which is a plus. Uh, I like it nice and quiet. But I would say those are kind of the essentials to my room, added on top of, like, the loft bed and the ca- uh, kind of counter space I was talking about earlier. Well, along with the, the pet, I have, a, I have a, this 55-gallon aquarium, and uh, it does make noise, but the noise is like a, like a pleasant trickling water effect. It's like a raindrop noise. Yeah, a raindrop type of noise. And just kind of looking at it, looking at the little cute fish swimming around is really relaxing. On top of all that, you could consider adding some natural, like you, the listener, could consider adding some natural elements to your room. Uh, things like plants or maybe a little fountain. Plants obviously can add a little life to the room. In the same place that I read about how our brains prefer a particular kind of lighting, our brains also like to look at green things. Again, this is probably going back to our caveman days when we spent most of our time outside and and looked at green things. Uh, So plants can be good for your mental health, too. I can see that. Um, Actually, kind of going back to having the fountain... If you keep a pet cat, this is just a little bit of trivia. Cats actually naturally prefer to drink from running sources of water. All right. It's kind of an interesting little tidbit, but uh, the kind of stagnant water of a bowl, cats are actually a little bit averse to, but if it's all they have, they'll drink from it. Right. And uh, that probably is their own evolutionary kind of instinct. Safety mechanism. Running water is typically safer, right? Yeah, yeah. And having those natural elements will possibly help freshen up the air in your space and make it more comfy. Do you you have any other kind of musts in your room? Let's see. You mentioned a fridge, and yes, having your snacks at close hand is always good, but uh, I like to have a little mini bar. Interesting. Back when I had a full-time job, I don't actually drink alcohol that often right now just because i haven't really felt the need to but a mini bar is nice when i want to make just a small drink in the evening and relax let's see making cocktails and stuff isn't too complicated especially if you're not making chick drinks like i'll just make a little havana style daiquiri and what like after a long day of work that actually helps you unwind pretty quickly as long as you don't drink too much and I have a mini fridge that's just the right size to fit in this shelf in my room, and it keeps all my booze cold. That sounds, uh, that does sound cozy. I myself don't drink at all, so I don't think I would, uh, use something like that myself, but it's a, it's an interesting idea. It seems like it'd be a lot of work to maintain. Not really. It's, uh, it mostly just kind of sits over there and waits for me to come and drink it. Alcohol doesn't really go bad. I guess I was thinking more along the lines of one of those, like, uh, like keggers, you know, keg pour machine. Oh, no, I, I, I have like bottles of liquor, ah. uh, m- mostly rum. I, I'm, I'm a big rum guy. That fits the pirate aesthetic. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm into pirates for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. You are hard fiddle DD. But that's, uh, that's. Everything right off the top of my head that I could think of. Is there any other neat nest essential items you got, Dexter? I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I remember reading a story a long time ago, actually, that a guy forego, like, just got rid of his bed and just laid in a giant pile of clothes. Interesting. Like, just his laundry that he didn't use anymore, he turned that into his bed, and he's like, yeah, it's actually more comfy. And he, like, never washed it. So, like... His girlfriend hated it. <laughs> that is very interesting. That's very, uh, let's see, if you want to dive into the negative stereotype of a neat, that is 
all that's like exactly something I would imagine them doing. <laughs> yeah, the unwashed kind of disgusting man. Yeah, yeah. Well, like he doesn't even have a bed. He just he has a pile of wa- of laundry he sleeps in, almost <laughs> like a literal nest, right? Like a bird's nest. Right. That's definitely. Yeah, that's definitely uh, how I would think of it. It's his, his <laughs> pile, his, yeah, his nest, his domain. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> don't, I I would encourage people not to do that. <laughs> I, my brother is actually quite messy, and I remember a, a period of time, his, it was like, I would say his floor was made out of his laundry, because, like, you couldn't see the floor because all of his dirty clothes were just tossed on the floor. I would add this just kind of as a closer to like the neat nest in general. Uh huh. Sanitation. It's important. Um, you don't want ants. You don't want all of that. All the stuff that comes with critters. Just if you keep it clean, it's comfy. If you don't keep it clean, it's not cozy for you, and it's probably not cozy for anyone else unless you're into that kind of thing. Right. Uh, and to add to that, I would say like eating food in your room is fine, but don't keep the dishes or food trash in your room because that's just going to attract all kinds of unwanted guests. Right. And it stinks after time, too. And you don't want uh, I, yeah, a room that stinks. Uh, we didn't really talk much about how a room smells, but uh, a stinky room is not what you want. No, it's definitely not comfy. I guess if we have nothing else, uh, before we conclude today's episode, we want to hear from you in the Neatwork Discord. Link is in the description below. We have a board for posting your own personal neat nests and battle stations. And at some point in the future, we'd like to do an episode reviewing your nests once we uh, get enough of that to fill an episode anyway. But with that, thank you for listening all the way through to the end. If you like what you heard, you can help us grow in a few ways. If you're listening on SoundCloud, leave a like and consider downloading the episode. If you're listening on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm sure you've heard it a million times, but it actually helps more than you think it does. Or, if you would like to support us in a more personal way, consider subscribing to our Patreon. Your kind donation helps support the network by paying for guest appearances and membership to various podcasting host websites. And we mentioned it before, but absolutely take a look at the neat Discord where all things neat are discussed. And I think with that, I'd like to say good night and stay comfy, Dexter. Stay comfy, Theo.